The Ballad of Cable Hogue is a 1970 film that was directed by Sam Peckinpah, and it stars Jason Robards, Stella Stevens, and David Warner. It's set in the Arizona desert during a period when the frontier was closing. The film follows three years of the life of a failed prospector. There's no doubt about it that it's a western, but the movie is really unconventional for that genre and for the director, Sam Peckinpah. It contains only a few brief scenes of violence and gunplay, relying more on a subtly crafted story that could better be characterized as comedic in nature. The storyline goes that Cable Hogue is a prospector who is abandoned in the desert with no water, and all this was done by his so-called partners. Nearing death, he discovers a natural spring, and he's soon at the nearest town to register a land claim on this land. There he meets a pretty local prostitute named Hildy. Back at his claim site, he christens it Cable Springs, where he opens a station for stagecoaches where the horses can be watered and the passengers fed. Hildy soon joins him, but only on a temporary basis, as she has big dreams of moving to San Francisco. Things go very well for Cable. When to his delight, his former partners accidentally show up, not knowing that he owns this place. This time he's prepared for them, and he teaches them a lesson. When Hildy returns, after a long absence, he's ready to pack it in and make a new life with her. But as it so often is the case, fate intervenes and changes things drastically. The director, Sam Peckinpah, followed his violent, critically acclaimed 1969 film, The Wild Bunch, with this mostly non-violent western. He utilized a lot of the same cast in this film as in The Wild Bunch, like L.Q. Jones and Struther Martin, and a vast number of the crew members were used on both films. Peck and Paul shot on location in the desert of Nevada, but the production was plagued by poor weather. Peckinpah's renewed alcohol consumption, which was at a staggering pace, and his brisk firing of 36 crew members made this a troublesome shoot. When they were unable to shoot due to weather conditions, the cast and crew would go to the local bar. Eventually, they ran up a tab of about $70,000 at this establishment. The chaotic filming of this project lasted 19 days over schedule and $3 million over budget, and this basically terminated Peck and Paul's relationship with Warner Brothers, effectively damaging his movie career beyond repair. His alienation by the studio left him with very limited number of directing jobs. Even though this guy was so talented, it was unbelievable. He was just a terrible person to work with and to be a part of a film that he was directing. He was just out of control. His drinking was so bad that he couldn't get along with anybody. He was forced to do a complete turnaround after this film and travel to England to direct Straw Dogs from 1971. The soundtrack of the movie and its original score was by Jerry Goldsmith and the songs were by Richard Gillis. The soundtrack to the movie is unbelievable. It's one of the best of this time period. Each of the main characters has a theme. Hogue's song is Tomorrow is the Song I Sing. Hildy's is Butterfly Morning. And Joshua's is Wait for Me Sunrise. The movie was really one of Peckinpah's favorites. He was often asked to speak about his work, and he would always bring a copy of this film to show. Even though he had much more famous works, this was truly his most loved film. And I know there are so many people that have never seen this movie, and you're really missing out. This is a well-edited, well-scripted, well-acted movie that is just a blast to watch. The dialogue is just quick and witty. 
in August of 1969, Warner Brothers, who had their eye on this film as a failure, showed it to their distributors in a a two-and-a-half-hour rough cut of the film without the knowledge of either Peckinpah or the producer, Phil Fellman. The director had urged the studio to hold off on their judgment of the film, which had been completely negative up to this point, until he could cut another half hour from the movie. The studio allowed him to do this, but they did this more out of apathy than for respect for his talent. The movie had a really positive audience reaction, with almost 70% of the people watching it really liking it. In February of 1970, Warner Brothers dumped this film on the market with hardly any promotion behind it. Stella Stevens made the statement that Warner Brothers didn't release this movie. They flushed it. And I have to agree with this. This movie would have done well had they promoted it. Stella Stevens was always Sam Peckinpah's first choice for the role of Hildy. And he reassured her even when Stevens doubted herself as being right for the part. As Stevens and the producers clashed over money and billing, executive producer Feldman looked at Joanne Woodward as a possible replacement. But she wanted way too much money for this part, so Stevens went ahead and got it. Now David Warner, who plays the fake preacher, suffers from vertigo, and he had a panic attack before he was scheduled to fly out to the set. Although they had never met, this English actor was Sam Peckinpah's first choice to be cast in this role, and he was going to do whatever he had to do to get him here. He arranged for him to sail to America, even though that meant holding up his scenes for three weeks. The English actor deeply appreciated this, and they made two more films together that being Straw Dogs and Cross of Iron. Stella Stevens said in a 2004 interview that she adored working with Jason Robards, but she said working with David Warner was a bit strange. He had just come over from England, and it was his first big film in the United States. Now, Stella Stevens once said that the director was not a great comedic director, but I have a tendency to disagree. This film is funny, and Peckinpah looked at this as a comedy. She argued with him about this, saying that this is not a comedy. The hero dies at the end. This is a love story, and that it may have some funny stuff in it, but it's not a true comedy. Stevens said that she loved the director and thought he was excellent at his job, but he was really tough to put up with. Alcohol was driving his life, and he was a bitter man, knowing how talented he was and not being appreciated by the studios had taken its toll on him. The more this went on, the more he drank, and the worse it got. She described working with him as if you were working with a wounded rattlesnake. His personality was so very volatile, you never knew whether he was going to love you or hate you. He constantly hid behind dark or mirrored sunglasses and mumbled when he spoke on set, so you'd have to get right up to his face to hear what he was directing you to do. He did about everything possible to drive an actor crazy. Now, the scene where Stella Stevens is first introduced to audiences is just a classic, and it gives you some insight into what the rest of the film is going to be like. Cable Hogue is so taken back by her beauty and her buxom shape, he loses his train of thought completely. He forgets what he's there for. The interaction between these two is classic, and it really does set the tone for the entire movie. Stella Stevens is just gorgeous in her role as Hildy. But as of the date of this recording... She's confined to an Alzheimer unit in California. It's so sad to think about this beautiful lady that was so talented now being affected by this disease. If you've never seen this movie, do yourself a favor and watch it. You'll love it. It's really well done. Thank you so much for watching, 
and we'll continue to chase the classics. <laughs>